our live Tenacious Freak is number one again. That's three in a row, three in a row for Tenacious Freak. Hello, everybody. I'll get to that in a second, but welcome to the show. I'm Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Well, no, I'm Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man. What the hell? I'm so excited that I'm here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, people around the world, old folks, new folks, middle-aged people. Thank you so much for joining us. Aquanets is in the house. Yes, thank you so much. Like I said a few weeks ago, if you come in and you're the first person to come and say hello to me at the live show, I will go ahead and mark it down. And Tenacious Freak, this is your third week in a row. And if you hit five, I will be, well, forced, prompted, happy to join you if you have one or if you don't. But I will be taking one for myself. I will be doing a shot. So, um, Tenacious Freak, Aquanauts are here. Thank you so much. If you're here and you're new to the show, uh, let me tell you a little bit about it, what goes on. Who do we got, Greg Z? About time. I've been sitting here for the past three hours. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. You are... <laughs> Dude, I love you guys, man. Hats off. Nice to see you, sort of. Um, I get so excited when I uh, pop on and I see you guys here. We're going to try to run this maybe and keep it to an hour. So I'm going to talk a little bit faster than normal, but I will definitely slow down. Rick Duffy, yes, what's up, bro? All right, Rick Duffy's in the house. Guys, if you don't know, Rick Duffy grew up, me and him grew up together. Um, we're longtime childhood friends for 40 plus years. Rick, big hugs. Good to see you here, bro. Thank you so much for joining. We got lots of fun. We got people chiming in from Orlando. We got people coming in from Denmark. We got some British folks. Probably Aston will join us a little bit later. Who do we? I'm not that old. Oh, I know you're that old, buddy. We went to school together. Hey, look, if you're new to the show, this is what we go ahead and do. We go ahead, we have a lot of banter, okay? We go and we review two beers every show. Um, Steve, good to see you again. I've been playing solid there waiting for you. Oh, so I'm, I'm like, yes, my Aunt Sue is here. Hell yeah. Okay, those two beers, I go ahead and I give a score. And we're going to talk a little bit about the score a little bit later in the show. But while we're going ahead and trying out the beers, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about everything in between. Maybe some current things that come up in the news. Now, we don't like to get too political here. So if you're looking for like political talk and like banter and, uh, well, a fight, basically a verbal fight, not going to get it here, okay? We don't do that here. Um, I know here in our country right now, it's in a little bit of an upheaval. Borrow from India, yes! My man, what's up, dude? Um, but we just don't, we don't get that. We don't kind of promote that kind of anger here in this show. We do have shows, and we have segments of shows called What Are You Reading? What Are You Watching? There, we talk about what are you reading? What are you watching? His taste is pretty simple. We have a new segment called What Are You Doing For Your Health? I got another segment where we have What Would You Rather? And that's a ton of fun. And for those of you that are leaving the comments after the show, thank you so much. I look forward to reading them um, each and every uh, after show. And then my favorite segment of the show, I think, is called This Day in History. Um, so yeah, then we go ahead and we wrap things up with a quote. All in between, we talk about the videos that are coming out on my channel. We drink the beers. I give it a score. And it's a hell of a good time. So thank you so much. If this is your first time here, if you're live or if you're watching on the replay, I really appreciate you joining me. We got some good things to get started to. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get right into the show. As you can see, this amazing shirt, this crazy friggin' shirt that I got here, this was given to me by a friend of mine from Thailand. Well, he is actually Canadian, but he was living in Thailand. And uh, this day in history, yes, Michael. Yes, you. Uh, that's awesome. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of me uh, reading your comment out loud, responding back with either a fist bump, a high five, a cha-cha-cha, I don't know, whatever I'm feeling. Um, it's going to be a good time. But okay, so... You see this ridiculous, crazy, amazing shirt, right? This thing is freaking awesome. I got two of them. Another one's got dragons and shit and all kinds of fun stuff. And I really didn't know which one to go ahead and wear for this show. Because we're going to be going ahead and we're going to be diving into some beers from one of my favorite countries in the world, Thailand. And that's where this shirt comes from. And boy, is it amazing. I've been there four times and each and every time absolutely loved it we're going to talk a little bit throughout the show about my experiences maybe you've been to thailand let me know down in the comments right now if you've ever been to thailand but it is freaking awesome hey you should go over 100 you know greg 
That's funny that you say that because I was looking at it the other day and it was like my live shows plus my um, my regular Travel Man Dan shows and the Reading Man Dan, the Food Friday. I'm up over close to 200. Why is what is in your t-shirt? Everything. Dude, this is the craziest. Jens, yes. Ready run upload tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay, good to see you, Jens. Check it out later. But yes, there is everything going on in here. I don't know, some kind of crazy Thai goddess. We got another one over here. Wings and all kinds of funky hats. And that's what's really fun about Thailand is they got a really unique kind of <clears throat> culture to them. But the modern day Thai people are just, how do I say this? They're the nicest people that I've ever met traveling. And that's tough to say. And, um, you know, it's not that other countries were ever rude or mean to me because I've never actually had that. A sprinkle here and there and a sprinkle here and there. But uh, for the most part, every country I go to, whether it be Lithuania or Denmark or you go to Canada or somewhere in Africa, the people have always been nice to me. But there's just something about Thai people, man. And, I, I, you know, I would even so much just to say is branch that off into Southeast Asia with a uh, little Vietnam in there, uh, Cambodia, um, and uh, Laos. Although I've never been to Laos, uh, hopefully I'll be going uh, next June. I'm looking forward to it, so dab. Oh, hey, what's up, Aston? Yes, welcome to the show. So we're talking a little bit about beers, Thailand, this and that. If you ever want to check out a cool place, go to Thailand. You'll absolutely love it. We'll get into it. As today, I'm going to roll out the first beer, and that is this delicious original Thai lager from Bangkok. We are drinking the Sing Ha. Check that out. Okay. Right away, when we look at the label, we can kind of see that lion kind of blending right into my shirt. See what I mean by Thailand? They just got some really cool art and all kinds of fun stuff going on with a lot of their, well, traditional... I don't know how religious it is or what it actually means because I'm not Thai. Um, I've been there a few times and I've had these conversations, but um, it's more like they're gods and they're people that they look up to, much like uh, Christianity and Catholics look up to, well, like uh, saints and, and people like popes and cardinals and things like that. Uh, premium, yes, it is. It is a premium lager, okay? But, um, but we're going to go ahead and, and crack it open. And uh, if you've never seen this show, you know when we have a bottle, we always use our famous red bottle opener. One of these days, I should, I should give this to, to somebody. We're going to start doing a lot of giveaways. So, uh, yeah. But we're going to figure out how to incorporate that. It's actually a Budweiser. I got it from a nightclub I used to work at. Uh, I used to run a nightclub in Hollywood. <laughs> If we ever, Bangkok's Oriental City with the city, you can get, get, get to my, yes, Bangkok is nuts, dude. But um, if you ever want to hear some fun stories, those are some like privates <laughs> when I see you in person. Uh, ask me about the nightclub. Good stuff. But this is where it came from. We use it every day on the show. We use it every time on the show when we have a bottle. Let's crack this thing high open. Make a travel man Dan open. Dude. Yes. Tenacious freak. I'm going to do that. I am. Who would like to see a Travel Man Dan bottle opener? I was looking for some way to incorporate merch, and this is perfect way to do it. Michael, Tenacious Freak, thank you. Okay? It was like right down the tip of my tongue, and you basically just pushed me in the water. So thank you, sir. I'm on it. All right, dude, this is right away TMD can holders. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that, some, some beer stuff. See, the whole ultimate... Um, Thank you. The whole ultimate big idea of this whole thing is eventually the Travel Man Dan cartoon, right? How awesome would that be? Where I'm traveling around, maybe I meet some uh, uh, some kids or whatever, and we kind of do some like Indiana Jones, like some adventure stuff. And each and every episode, I suck down that country's beer. <laughs> Make a Travel Man Dan beer borrow. Now you're on to something. It takes a little more ingenuity. Um, maybe, maybe later, maybe if someone wants to go ahead and reach out to me, I'd definitely be interested in that. That's the whole big, uh, the big picture of it all. But each and every cartoon, I suck down their beers. I get my special powers. <laughs> you could do a shirt with TM. All the yes, I could definitely, Greg. By the way, if you haven't seen my merch on my channel, you can go and click on the description. I know it's really hard to get over to Europe, but. Um, don't worry, I got my secret pad right here. No bullshit, okay? This is the Travel Man Dan pad. 
all right? And I write down a lot of stuff, but um, if you're here on the show and I've probably already called out your name, your name is somewhere on that pad of paper. And when I do my free giveaway, no matter where you're at in the world, I'm going to make sure that you get some of this merch because it's gonna be free. I'm putting my own money into it. And um, I just wanted to go and send it out to people that have been supporting me from day one. I won't forget shit like this. If you are in the States or Canada or whatever and you wanna purchase through my store, it's always in the description. Uh, drinking a Belgian Pal Al from Grim... Ooh, I heard that's good. Belgian Pal Al. So, yeah, that's where we're going to go with that. We definitely are really getting into some, some ramble talk, but let's go ahead and pour this Singha, okay? This is a premium Thai liquor. I don't have any pads, but my wife has some. Okay. Very nice, Greg. Very nice. All right. So, taking a look at this beer... Now we can see that it is a light beer. I can see you through this. Somebody throw me up a comment. I will read it through the glass of beer. That's how light this is. I'm waiting. Somebody going to toss me up something. Just put up an emoji, I guess, and I'll tell you what it is. But you can see that I'm talking to you through this beer and the lightness of the beer. So, well... I don't know, maybe maybe we'll get back to that a little bit later. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Shit, sorry, Austin. Okay, well, right away I can smell all the melt. Hey, Dad's here. Yes, say cheese. All right. So right away I can smell the maltiness of this beer. This Pilsner, it definitely is lighter, but on a hot day like today, I bet you it's going to be crisp and refreshing. Let's get into it. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is really good. Oh, that really is hitting the spot right now. It's about 100 degrees, so it's probably about 120 degrees here in the studio. Like I said, crisp, refreshing. It's light. It's not really citric at all. I taste a lot of, well, that kind of um, roasted uh, barley flavor. Really good. It reminds me of back in the day that OV taste. You guys remember Old Vienna? Okay, really nice and clean coming out of the bottle. Really delicious. I mean, super light, but really good beer. And um, gosh, it brings back fun days in Bangkok. <laughs> oh man, those were good ass days. Uh, I can't wait to go back to Southeast Asia. Really looking forward to it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into the first topic of today. And that's what we always like to start at. Travel man, cheese and wine. Just joined TMD. What are you drinking? It's Steve. Yes. Let's see. We got family in the house. We are drinking, Steve. Can you guess? I'm in, I'm in Thailand today, and we are drinking a Singha Thai Premium Lager Beer. Now, I've sucked down quite a few of these in downtown Bangkok on the island of Koh Samui. So, well, I have had the beer before, but I haven't had it in a long time. So it's really fun, and it's really nice to go ahead and review it. And I also believe it was a recommendation from Aston. I think Aston, didn't you recommend this, or Jens from England? Um, so, yeah, here we go. We're on the Thai day. So we're going to check in. Hope you guys are doing okay with the COVID, with uh, all the pandemic that still seems to be lingering. And if you don't know, it has sparked up and surges here in California. I know Arizona is pretty bad in Texas uh, and Florida. So I hope you're okay, Greg. I know you're down in Florida. Yeah, just be safe out there, guys. Um, you never know, you know, you just want to play it safe, right? I mean, this thing's been going on for months now. Um, one thing that I am looking forward to is sports are coming back. Uh, American primetime sports. Well, then you got to taste this. Is it good? Ah, uh, Grimbergen. It sounds good. Uh, I'm drinking a white Belgium gal from Grimbergen. It just sounds right. Um, so, yeah. So, one thing I'm really excited about, and I hope that you guys are too, is that uh, the big sports are coming back here in the United States. Uh, a couple of the seasons got, well, all the seasons got cut short, but a couple of them towards the tail end. So, like basketball and hockey. Basketball is going to be back on July 30th. They're going to be playing in Orlando at Disneyland. Um, and it's, of course, your cousin, Missy. Yes, what's up, Missy? How are you? Welcome, another kid who is living in Kenmore. All right, so thank you so much. Um, nice to have you here. Um, thanks for joining your wacky cousin. But, um, okay, so 
Basketball is coming back in Orlando on July 30th. Really looking forward to that. Go Clippers. I live in Los Angeles. I'm a Clippers fan. Um, if you don't know, the Los Angeles Clippers came from the city of Buffalo back in 1967. I believe they moved. So uh, I would like to see them win that chip. Uh, nothing more here in Denmark. Everything is open. Sad to hear about. Yes. Yeah, so Denmark's back running full operation. You know, it's just, who knows what it is. It's just the complexity of different people, different opinions, uh, what's right and what's wrong, who knows, this kind of thing. So hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, we're a strong country full of strong people, but also we have a lot of different opinions. So um, if those opinions are slowing down our process, uh, hopefully that everyone will be safe and we'll figure this thing out. I don't know what else to say. Um, really excited about... Uh, baseball coming back guys are you guys i don't know if you guys know this or not but the toronto blue jays are a major league baseball team obviously the city of toronto is in canada canada's borders are closed to the united states so they can't be flying in and out going in and out for players and stuff so this season when major league baseball opens up next week on july 23rd the toronto blue jays will be playing all their home games in Buffalo. That's right, they'll be playing them downtown at the Triple A Stadium where the Buffalo Bisons played. Oh man, is that exciting or what? I don't know the actual capacity of the stadium. I believe it's a little bit smaller than a major league stadium at like 30,000, but should be a huge event for the city of Buffalo. 60 games um, they're gonna be able to bring there. And if the Blue Jays, um, well, the Blue Jays are in the same uh, division is the Yankees, so they're probably going to at least have six games against the Yankees, and there's a lot of New York Yankee fans, so that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting for the city of Buffalo. Um, I, too bad I wasn't there. I wish I was back in Buffalo to watch that, but um, but it'd still be fun because I actually played at that field in high school a few times. I played there for the championship game. I played there for uh, the all-star game, and it's a great field. It's um, right in downtown Buffalo, and I'm excited that the city of Buffalo, the close to baseball ever been was on the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> oh man, if you come to America, Tenacious Freak, you gotta, you gotta at least go see a baseball game. It's, um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a really complex game. Um, it's a fun game. A lot of people think it's boring, but it, I, if you ever played it and uh, you understand it, it's awesome. It's really fun. And then of course, rounding out uh, the last of it in August will be NHL, hockey. Woohoo! Now the cool thing about hockey is they're going to be stuck in Canada. They're only going to be playing in two cities, and that's Edmonton and Vancouver. So uh, hockey will be back. What they're going to do is like a, like a tournament style, so that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, really looking forward to that. So yay for sports being back. Let's get back into the Sing High. Sing Ha. Mmm, okay, delicious, right? It's not going to overwhelm you with taste and flavor of hops like an IPA one. You're not going to be like, ooh, this beer is so good. And then you're going to talk about its brevity and its complexity and all kinds of different layers to it. It's just your straight premium lager. All right, It's just really good. Just what it looks like. Mmm, beer. Right? Delicious, tasty. But I'll tell you when this thing is the best is... It's really fun here in the studio, but when it's absolute best is when you're sitting on the beach in Thailand, and uh, maybe you're at uh, Koh Samet, and you're hanging out, and you're drinking, 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 and here comes um, a, a man or a woman, and they have like a bamboo stick on their shoulders. It's really cool, and you'll see it throughout Vietnam also. Um, and then on one side is a dangling pot. I mean like a quart, like 20 a quart pot like huge pot full of water and on the other side will be some kind of crustaceans i got a tattoo while i was drunk in thailand <laughs> definitely so did i yes missy we think alike i can't lift my leg up this high but you see that and i also got a tattoo when i was drunk in thailand and it was awesome okay must be something in the family but hey really fun cool thing is these people, you know, they're carrying some kind of crustacean in this pot over here. And you just holler at them and they start off, ah, And you just call them over and they go ahead and they set up like a little fire right there on the beach. Give you a sing ha. And then they go ahead and they boil the water and they drop lobsters or crabs or whatever. And you eat them right there, right on the sand, fresh as can be. 
absolutely delicious um they use uh they don't use a lot of butter like we do they use more of a citrus kind of like lemon lime mixture and then some chili sauce man ooh. so that's my favorite time to eat a or drink a singha i don't know if you've ever done that but i recommend if you ever hit it up this is a travel show it's all based around travel and seeing the world i hope you get a chance to go to thailand and try out some crustaceans on the sand all right moving right along we're talking everything covid everything uh you know getting out of hand again here and if you guys are from the los angeles area you're here in los angeles it's very cool greg you would you would like it man it's it's neat man and i've also seen it in cambodia in a, in a little town called sanukville a uh, really cool beach town but um but yeah gavin newsom is definitely uh pissing some people off and if you're here in los angeles you'll feel it uh, my buddy who owns this great barber shop called Fades and Blades, has been all over the news because he's uh, going against Gavin Newsom's orders and he's keeping his salon open. And uh, if you're ever in the area, hopefully you'll be able to check it out. Once again, it's called Fades and Blades. He's, um, he's defining what the government is saying about staying open because he's got a legitimate gripe. You know, He's got to feed his wife and he's got his children and he's got to keep his business open and all the barbers have to keep all their stuff open. And he's got two places. It's LA, rent's expensive. And the, here's the kicker. They're using all the necessary precautions like sanitation and um, cleanliness and, and just making sure that they're wearing masks and wiping stuff down each and every session. So you know, I kind of feel bad for the guy and I feel bad for all those small businesses out there and all those people that are out there suffering that, um, you know, they rely on us to go and give them their business. So hopefully when this thing is over, no matter what country you're in, no matter what kind of person you are, that you're going to go and be able to support some type of local business, whether it's a salon, barbershop, restaurants, of course, um, maybe just this like a little bric-a-brac shop that stayed open, like a comic book store or something, any way possible, whatever you can do. I hope that you can go ahead and support those people because they're going through some shit right now. And um, aside from the pandemic being a health thing, it's also becoming uh, just quite a strain financially on these people. And I'm out here supporting and talking about my buddy, trying to spread the news for his barbershop. So if you're in LA, hit up Fades and Blades. There's one in Valley Glen, there's one in Burbank, and get yourself a fresh cut. Um, the government wants to shut your business down, and they should pay you. Yeah, they should pay you what you're going to be making. Hey, Greg, I'm all for that, you know. I'm definitely for that. And... Um, I've been blessed. I've been able to continue doing what I'm doing, so I'm not getting hit that hard in terms of that. And yeah, I'm, I'm frustrated. I want to go out and make videos and stuff like that, but my time will come, um, and uh, I'm enjoying my live show every week here, and I'm enjoying reading Man Dan. We'll get to that in a little bit later, but guys, I also want to talk about now the videos. Make... <sighs> yeah. Hi, LOL. What's up? All right. We got another returning customer to the show. Thank you so much. I want to talk about the, sh the, the food Friday that came out last week. It's about a really cool place. It's a, it's a fast food restaurant, upscale, uppity, kind of hoity-toity, a little bit higher up than your regular McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King. It's called Farmer Boys. And one cool thing that I did with Farmer Boys is um, I, have, I have a couple of videos always uh, in the deck, right? So I go ahead and I edit them and I get them ready. Um, they just tell people to close. They let people to pro. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you on that one, pops. I am. I'm. I'm definitely with you on that one. Um, especially big cities like LA. I mean, we get 50, 60 thousand protesters. Um, okay, so what I was saying is about Farmer Boys. So the weird thing about Farmer Boys is a lot of people don't know about it. It's here in California and then only in Nevada. But it was really fun. And one thing I did is I went ahead and I didn't pull out one of those videos from previous uh, filming sessions. I went ahead and I filmed it live, just like I'm doing here. Um, it was awesome, man. I had a good time. I saw some of you guys there, so thank you for hopping on. It was completely unexpected. I was about the night before, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try going live tomorrow. I want to see what happens for the Food Friday going live. So I went I went to Farmer Boys. I tried out their delicious 
breakfast, the bacon burrito, and man, that sucker was good. It was so fresh. All the ingredients were proper. Really just kind of your staple kind of breakfast burrito. But when it's done right, it's done right and you taste it. And this was no different. It was excellent. Sometimes you go to these fast food restaurants or these little uh, corner stops or the little uh, carts. The carts are really good actually <laughs> here in LA. Um, I don't know where you live, but watched it today. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? You know, we're, we're, we're moving past it. We're trying to do our best. We're on to burrito talk. And so the fun thing about Farmer Boys was, you know, it is a little more upscale, but the taste is so good. And if you get a chance, check out that video. And if you get a chance to come here to California, make sure you seek out a Farmer Boys. We're going to go ahead and we're still going to go do a video of like their main uh, lunch and dinner. They do all kinds of crazy uh, cheeseburgers and avocado cheeseburgers and bacon. They got kind of like a, a full menu of sandwiches. So we're going to go ahead and do a proper video style. But uh, I just wanted to go ahead and do live. So if you hopped on, um, thank you if you saw me live. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's in the play deck. And Greg, you're absolutely right. I'm coming up on like the 100th episode. Katie made the best breakfast burrito I ever had Sunday. Dude, Katie did. Man, that's awesome, Katie. Katie's a keeper. Katie is a keeper, man. Um, so, yeah, check it out if you get a chance. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your opinion of either that video or if you've ever eaten at Farmer Boys. Let's get back now into the Singhai, the premium lager of Thailand. Man, so delicious. One thing I really taste on this is... The maltiness, okay? Hey, Danny, happy Sunday. Baba, what's up, man? What's going on, Baba? Happy Sunday to you. Thanks for hopping on. We're trying out this delicious beer called Sing Ha. It is a Thailand premium lager, and it is very, very malty, okay? It's got a bit of a, a dry taste to it, okay? It's well-balanced, and it's crisp and light, but easy to drink. And if you've never tried it, well, I definitely suggest maybe going to the local Asian market to find it. A lot of times, uh, beers from Thailand and, uh, you know, Korea and places like Japan and stuff like that, they're not always in your regular supermarkets. But if you go and seek them out, you could probably find them in some kind of mega Asian market. I know Buffalo has one. Pretty much any metropolitan city enjoy a beer like that once in a while. Yeah. Means anything in Thai? I don't. You know what? That's a good question. I don't know. I only know. Um, I only know how to say hello in Thailand and in Thai. And it's uh, for for men. It's sawadi krap. Okay. So and you, you you like a slight bow and you put your hands together like this. And then for women uh, who are speaking it, it's sawadi ka. So krap ka. Yeah, sawadi ka. And um, that's that's the greeting that you'll get no matter where you go in Thailand. Uh, you'll meet people at the bank, at the grocery store, uh, out on the streets, at restaurants, things like that. And they'll always greet you with a smile and sawadikra. And um, it's pretty cool, man. It's it's um, it's a unique experience. And I got to be honest with you, uh, from coming from me, just a kid from Kenmore, New York, when I started seeing that stuff, when I started hearing it, and like being like right there in Thailand, in the old city of Siam. Siam or Siam, I don't know. Um, man, it was just really special, and I uh, hope you get a chance to check it out one day for yourself. It's awesome. It's a, it's a huge tourist travel destination. Thailand, in general, is usually separated into three pieces, and that's the north, where the city of Chiang Mai is, and then you have the central, where Bangkok is, and then you have the south, where, uh, where uh, Phuket is is considered so Chiang Mai is a lot of the old history the elephants the old ruins this kind of thing Bangkok is that crazy hustle and bustle Asian city it's nuts there um, just a really cultural conglomerate of people just crazy tuk-tuks everywhere tuk-tuks are like little motorcycles that you can ride in the back on really fun good stuff and then the lower part phuket is where all the islands are where all the beaches are the crazy palm trees that you see that are like sideways and just blossoming with coconuts and stuff so really cool really unique country um, and then you'll see Muay Thai boxing just about everywhere, um, which is really cool. Like you'll literally be in a bar and there'll be a ring inside the bar 
Wish I had a tuk tuk in Kenmore. <laughs> I, one day, Missy, I, I I swear to you, I I will bring one one day to the United States, and they're so fun. They're these like little 110 motorcycles. I'm here with Grandma, Uncle John, John Brian. Hey, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> I got the whole family on deck. Woo! Yes. Okay, well, well, good to see everybody. Hello, Soleil family. It's nice to see you. I hope you're all doing well. I know you're having a good time. Pattaya is a very famous city in Thailand. Yes, it is. Pattaya, I've been to several times. It's really wild there. It's like the party, like the Vegas. Um, good stuff there. That's where um, I was drunk and got a tattoo. <laughs> but, but what's really crazy about Pattaya is when the U.S. Navy rolls in, it's, uh, it's literally like 10,000... Uh, people just coming off a boat in their Navy uniforms and it's it's pretty neat I was there the one time and it happened and uh, pretty fun pretty exciting and uh, yeah so let's go on now let's roll in to the next thing and that is the new kind of micro segment and we're gonna do a little thing called you know uh, what are you doing for your health and it's just a little something that I like to bring in that maybe um, I mention, or maybe you mention, uh, what do you guys do for your health? I hope you're staying healthy. Remember, it's the number one thing. And if you need a reminder, here it is. You can't do anything else unless your health is good. So, with that being said, I just do a little bit each day of exercise and go ahead. You got drunk and got a tattoo. I did that. <laughs> yes, see, there's three people on this show that have gotten a drunk and got a tattoo in Thailand. Aston from England, me, and uh, yes, yeah, Soleil family. And uh, Steve says hi. And we got uh, my cousin Missy. But guys, I don't know, and this is not a brand product. This is not a. Look, if they want to give me some money to go ahead and, and mention it, we'll, we'll talk, okay? But as we continue to grow, those things will come. But right now, I'm just telling you, I don't know if you guys ever do this. This is not beer, but do you guys ever drink this stuff? Hey, John, how are you from Wisconsin? Yes, good to see you. Wisconsin, we're going to get into a little Wisconsin talk a little bit later. Hey, guys, do you ever drink this apple cider vinegar? This stuff, who is that? Tuba Tusan Skufen. Hello, yes. We got another Norwegian or Scandinavian, I should say. Guys, this stuff is awesome. I don't know. I buy it in this big-ass gallon. Okay, one gallon of this stuff. Danish. Yes. Where do you guys get tattooed? And I got tattooed on my leg, and it was a corner bar. I don't. We were at a bar called Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, yes. So this is uh, apple cider vinegar. If you guys are ever interested in, in taking it, I drink, um, I just drink, <laughs> I drink a little bit each day, just a glass, one ounce, uh, really good stuff. You're going to see all kinds of little ailments go away. Um, it's really good for your gut health. It's really good for your skin health. Uh, just like little things. It's not going to make a miracle or whatever, but I thought I would share that with you. I picked it up today and was like, you know what? I'm going to talk a little bit. I try apple cider, but it tastes really bad. Yeah, you got to get kind of used to it. What I like to do is I sometimes put it in with, um, with a freshly squeezed lemon. We just got done with buffalo pizza. Oh, man. Uncle John. Really? Now you got to go there, huh? Guys, I'm going to be real f frank with you and up front. If you don't know about buffalo-style pizza, Buffalo, New York, you need to get your ass over there and try it, okay? Maybe you could stay over at my Uncle John's house. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. But no, no, you got to try it, man. Um, the best pizza in Buffalo, hands down, is a place in North Tonawanda called Good Guys. I'll leave it as that. I'm uh, working on something right now. Uh, yes, Stephen knows. I'm working on something right now when I go home for Christmas in December. I'm going to do the 12 days of pizza, and I'm going to try to eat at, at a different pizzeria. <laughs> no, it's called Good Guys. It's in North Tonawanda. It's, um, well... The easiest way I like to describe it to other people is it's a cross between Buffalo Pizza in general. It's a cross between Jack ate five slices. Mind you, Jack's, what, five years old? What's up, Jack? How are you, buddy? And um, Buffalo Pizza in general is a cross between New York City and Chicago. So it's a little bit thicker than the New York thin slice pizza, but it's a little bit uh, thinner than a Chicago like pie. But, man, we got... Uh, 
Best pizza, I think many places to compete. You can see the most toppings on a pie. Doesn't good, good guys have a former pizza junk set? See, yes, I think they, yes, you will love it. Yeah, I think they do, Bubba. And, um, yeah, that's what I want to plan to do. I want to do, you know, the Buffalo Staples, like, um, uh, you got your Lenovas and your Just Pizza and Bocce's. Um, that's a great description. Thanks, Duff. <laughs> hey, nice job, Jack. All right. Yeah, so um, Pizza Junction, I don't know. I heard that my father was telling me something that they reopened under a different owner. But, but the world needs to see Buffalo Pizza. I mean, the stuff is awesome. Uh, somebody explained it to me the other day, and they're like, does it have the curl and char? <laughs> and I'm like, I know exactly what he meant. And um, the pepperonis in Buffalo. Hi, Uncle John. <laughs> yes, the pepperonis in Buffalo are, uh, well, they're a little bit thicker cut. And it's crazy. You eat more than me, Jack. Um, they they curl up like little tiny swimming pools. And they get like grease traps going on in them. And it's just done right. Guys, stay tuned because when I go home in December, I'm going to bring you the 12 days of pizza and it's going to be awesome. I ordered a cup of char from a place in Buffalo. Can't find it up here. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's hard to find. Buffalo pizza is one of a kind. Hey, going on to the next thing. Speaking of eating, let's go ahead and take a drink because this Singhai is really pretty dang good. All right, as you can see, it's still keeping its carbonation as I shake it. You can see the bubbles, you know, swirling up together. Still a good sign that it's not going flat. And um, yeah, just a crisp, malty, kind of refreshing, overall premium lager. And really nice. This is the kind of beer where you know you're going to be in for it for the day. Cheers. That used to be the best pizza in Buffalo. Pizza Junction High School. Really? Everyone likes it, man. I, you know, it's kind of like um, Matina's, but I didn't really like Matina's. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is the kind of beer that you know you're going to get into, right? You're going to get into it with like at least 15. Um, <laughs> you're going to get into like 15 or 16 beers. It's light, it's crisp, it's refreshing. You know what you're going to get. But since all this talk about pizza, let's roll right into what's coming up this Monday as we talk about the micro episode of Travel Man Dan. Every episode on Mondays comes out. Where's the Jack? The Jack's over there, man. <laughs> Even more people watching the El Max. Yes, thank you. I know, man. It's, it's, it's really... How do I say this? I don't know else how to say it, but other than thank you so much. Um, it really makes me so happy and I get so excited thinking about the show during the week, preparing for it and making it uh, fun for each and every person. And thank you so much if you're watching me. But we're going to talk about the video that's coming out this Monday. It is called the Micro Men Day, where I go to a Chinese restaurant in Los Angeles and I eat one of my favorite dim sum restaurants. I eat chicken feet. <laughs> and if you've never had chicken feet, oh man, what an experience. It's literally the hand of a chicken. It looks like this, but smaller. Okay, they, they nip it off right, right below the wrist. And um, it's cooked in like, it's boiled in some type of soy sauce. It gives a really soft, moist texture. And when you're biting into it, <laughs> no, I did not wear gloves. This Remember, this micro episode was filmed. The full episode was filmed about a year and a half ago. So this cold corona thing wasn't going on <laughs> nasty. No, it's so good. You bite into this thing and all these little fragments of fingers and um, uh, like... DJ Farah, I'll have to look for that. I'll have to look for that one. And all these um like tendons and ligaments, and <laughs> you can feel it. But then the skin on this stuff is boiled just right and flavored, and uh, with a little nice chili sauce. They're not bad actually. So um, what's really funny is if you get one and the, and the fingernails are still on it, <laughs> and you can uh, check that out when all this COVID stuff ends. You need to. I would love to, Duff. I'm definitely gonna get back to South Carolina. You would never do it, Tenacious Freak. It's good, man. It's really good. And that's not even the craziest shit, like in China. I can't even begin to tell you all the weird and wacky things that I've eaten in Asia. Goose foot, more skin. <laughs> yeah, those, so 
those um those are interesting but i like the sichuan style the way it's steamed the way it's peppered the way that it's flavored really delicious and if you want to see it it comes out this monday on the channel check it out it's at a famous restaurant here in los angeles chinatown called the golden dragon dim sum did you ever get to korea no i haven't human foot even more um is it, uh, no, I've never had human foot. Hopefully, I'll get to Korea within the next couple years. That's the one that evaded me. Um, I did not get there, but uh, hopefully one day. Uh, <laughs> I love the tip of the wings. <laughs> yes, um, it's really, um, it's really not that bad. And you'll see, you'll see me eating. But, but Los Angeles, Koreatown is full of a lot of vibrant stuff. Let's go, man! As soon as COVID is done. All right, let's do it. I, I'm in. Jack likes this travel, man. <laughs> Jack. Jack, thank you, buddy. Okay, Jack is uh, my five-year-old cousin, okay? Doing well. How are you, buddy? Okay, this swig is for you. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and then I'm going to talk about the next thing. And then, well, the next thing we're going to do is what would you rather? So get ready for what would you rather? Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Right to the last sip. Guys, this is a Singha, okay? Okay. I'm six. Okay. You're six beers in? <laughs> All right. This is a Singha. Really delicious. Like I said, refreshing. It's um, it's a nice Pilsner that has a good malty. Thai beer, L Max. Have you had this one? Really good stuff. Um, drank it before. Really, really good. This is the original stuff. As you can see, they have a little imported label on it. It's really nice. Um, that's why I'm going to give it a really good score. I'm going to give it in Pilsner talk, and we're going to break down. I'm figuring out a way to go singa. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, thank you for sharing that with us, Al Max. So the correct pronunciation is singa. Okay, that's pretty cool. I always call it singha. <laughs> what the hell do I know? And I've been to Thailand <laughs> four times. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. But I'm going to give this an eight, a solid eight. As I go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, the grading system and how I go ahead and rate these beers. But we're going to save that for another episode. I just can't get into it right now. All right. The next one I'm going to get into, staying with Thailand, staying with the great country of Thailand, we are going to try another classic beer, another high fun lager, and I'm talking about Chang. All right, check it out. This sucker is going to be really good. I've drank multiple Changs in my life, and these are delicious. Okay, this one um, is also a low alcohol percentage. And I believe it is, yeah, it's only 4.3, so, uh, oh no, 5%, so a little bit stronger than the last one. You have 20 people, holy shnikes, yes, all right, thank you so much. Guys, in honor of the 20 people, I think it's time to crack this bottle. Yeah, I know, it does look like water. Now, we've had some skunky green bottles in our time. I've had that, it's good. Okay, Aston, I'm going to try it out. All right, check it out. Ooh, all right. Oftentimes when I open a green bottle, it stinks like a skunk's ass. Not today. This one's not too bad. Okay, let's go ahead. We cleaned out the glass and then let's pour it in here. And then we're going to get ready for one of my favorite new segments. Oh, maybe you're right with pronunciation. Oh, so th what are you drinking? Washcut Summer? <laughs> I don't know what that is, Uncle John. <laughs> yeah, I think it is Singha, but... um. Nevertheless, we're on to the new beer. This is what we're drinking now. Chang, another delicious lager from Thailand. And right away, wow, you can smell it. Oh, I wish you guys could smell it. Man, this thing is really nice. Okay, it's got a, a great aroma to it. As I can smell a bit of hops coming off the water of this sucker. Okay, it is also light. Somebody throw me a comment. I'll read your comment. We'll give it to five seconds. Okay, oh, it says OB. No, cheers. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was imagining stuff. But Strudel, check it out. Yes, we have another Dane in the house. Thank you so much. Guys, got a lot of Danish audience here because Denmark is awesome. And thank you so much. This is what we're drinking, Chong. It's a little bit smelly, but let's go ahead and take a whiff or take a drink. Okay. Yeah, just what I suspected. John, cheers. 
just what I suspected. The old green bottle, got you again. It's apparently pronounced Sing. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, you know, because I have friends in Laos, and I was calling it Singha, and they're like, what's Singha? And they're like, Sing? And I, but I was like, eh, whatever. I have two dogs, okay? <laughs> I'm the dog. All right, Uncle John, you have how many beers? Okay, so the first sip of the Chang was exactly what I thought. The green bottle skunk, right? You know that bottle that's been sitting in um, the, the lights and the refraction from the light is supposed to make the, the flavor of the beer a little skunky? Like the Heineken, like the Grouch, like many other green bottle beers, this one is no different. It just has that weird kind of like, it's almost like an earthy, skunky flavor, okay? Like a musty kind of weird, like, who did that? You know what I mean? Like, it's just a weird kind of taste that you're not expecting. But then you get through it, and, well, it is a light beer, so it is quite refreshing. And I'll tell you more about it as I suck it down, and we're in Thailand today. All right, guys, this is becoming one of my favorite things on this show. Oops, that was me again. <laughs> anyway, this is the show segment that I like to call What Would You Rather? And if you know me personally... You know I got the gift of gab. You know I like to chop it up and talk about everything in between. <laughs> and um, I used to talk to people about this to nausea, about what would you rather. And I said, you know what? I might as well start throwing it in my segments here on the live show. Because eventually I'm going to do a Travel Man Dan in the street, what would you rather. Where I go ahead and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We're going to do some random cards where I'm talking to people. But, but here on the show, I'm going to go ahead and ask you five questions. Now, it's really important that you listen to the five questions, maybe write them down or whatever, and then if you want to answer it, wait till this video is over. Wait till I say, you know, the whole big world out there, make sure you see every, and then I turn it off. After that, then put your answers in the comments below. Because I can't, I can't answer them if they all pop up here. Especially if we've got 20 great people in here with, uh, well, that's quite a bit. That's a hundred answers. So I really can't answer that right, and stay on topic and we'll end up being two hours. So... I'm going to go ahead and spit it to you. I'll tell you mine, and then you go ahead, wait till the show's over, and put down in the comments what would you rather answers. We do a couple of food ones, we call it a couple of interesting ones, and then we do a gross and disgusting one at the end. Well, here's number one. What would you rather, okay? Would you rather live in a giant house, massive house, with like eight bedrooms, a swimming pool inside, a movie theater, um, a bar, all kinds of cool things going on, whatever your hobby is, and this giant old mansion, but like a tiny front yard and no backyard, okay? Oh, yeah, we're going to keep it clean. Uh, uh, Dad, we always keep it clean. All right, so then that's your first option. Or would you rather live in a small, like, ranch-style house, but you live on, like, three to four acres of land with crazy swimming pools i mean like super water slides going into your apartment thing you got a uh, basketball court you got a uh, batting cage maybe even like a mini wiffle ball area you got all kinds of like maybe a track going around that you can run and exercise on but you can also ride uh, atvs or maybe snowmobiles but your house is small it's like a two to three bedroom ranch style um maybe just like <clears throat> I don't know, uh, 3,500 square feet, maybe a little bit less, as opposed to like a 20,000 square feet massive mansion. What would you rather? For me personally, I would prefer a smaller house with more stuff to do outside. That's just me personally. Okay, I got lucky one time and I lived in a really big mansion. It was awesome. But, um, you know, I like to be out doing things. All right, that's number one. Number two. What would you rather? Would you rather go to Carnival in Brazil, where it's all kinds of ladies dancing and parades and drinking and partying, festivities, eating uh, uh, the, the, the barbecue, all that good stuff? Or would you rather go to Germany and go to Oktoberfest and drink your ass off? All right? Polish off a couple of beers, uh, wear your lederhoser, and uh, just have a great time at one of those German Bavarian halls. Um, me personally, both of them sound fun. Love all of that stuff. But if I had to choose one, I would go to Oktoberfest. <laughs> and hey, I'm already thinking about 
hey, how about we all meet in Oktoberfest so it's September of next year. Wouldn't that be fantastic? The Travel Man Dan, um, like, meet up, right? And we do it at Oktoberfest. And we just go for, like, whatever, a week. I don't know. I would love to have my Uncle John there, my cousin Brian and Brenna, if you're listening, uh, Duff, you're there. Everyone here, just all meet up. Dad, of course, you know, we all go to uh, next September. Dan, Jack is still here. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not going to keep it clean. All right, so where are you going, Carnival or Oktoberfest? All right, number three. Are you, what would you rather? Are you more of a sugary candy kind? I don't want to have to mow the lawn, but I would wear it later. I'm not sure if those are. <laughs> uh, okay, wait till after the show and then put your all five of them down. Are you more of a sugary candy kind of sweet tart, gummy worms, gummy bears, sugary, you know, colorful rainbow tricks looking thing? Or are you more of like a chocolate person, like chocolate bars with peanut butter, uh, the little, you know, the, the, the big box of chocolate and all the different pieces in there? Which would you rather? For me, always going to go chocolate. Love all them Skittles and all that bric-a-brac stuff, but definitely 100%, not even close. Uh, dark chocolate with peanut butter and all kinds of little fun stuff, that's what I'm having. All right, question number four. What would you rather watch? Walking Dead or Game of Thrones? Boom. <laughs> no, you did not do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, you can only pick one. Watch one for me. Um, <clears throat> I definitely, <laughs> Uncle John, nice. Uh, I definitely would go Game of Thrones. I love all the medieval stuff. I love Iceland. I love all the cinematic stuff going on. <laughs> exactly. You're like, what? What are you going to do? Which one are you going to pick? Um, zombies, I think, are cool. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Tenacious Freak. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. Um, I'm going with Game of Thrones. All right. And the last one. Okay. This one is a little gross. It's a little disgusting. And bravery points, courage, all that good stuff for answering it. I'd love to hear your answer. This is what would you rather, and it's talking about eating. What would you rather eat? Okay. Would it be a fingernail and toenail sandwich? Like just a piece of bread with all kinds of fingernails and toenails all over it. And then another piece of bread and you're biting into it. And all oh, you're swallowed and they're just itching all the way down. And, ugh. Okay. Or would you rather a foot long hot dog. But instead of it being pork inside, it's hair. Okay. It's all kinds of chest hair maybe. Maybe a little armpit hair. And it's stuffed into the tube of the hot dog. And you put it. <laughs> You're like coughing it up, or whatever. All right. well, which one would you rather? It's a tough one. I'll go ahead and answer it here. I'm gonna go ahead with the hair hot dog. That's my guess. <laughs> Dad, what are you having? You having the fingernail toenail sandwich? Where do you dream up these things? <laughs> no, you know you gotta do it, man. You gotta have, you gotta have fun. That could kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Duff, what are you having? Okay, you having that hair hot dog or are you having the fingernail toenail sandwich? I don't know. I'm glad I can make you laugh. That's the whole point of this exercise. That's the whole point of the show. That we go and we have fun. We be light of it. We drink beer. We talk about everything else. Hairy hot dog, yes, Uncle John. Toenails. Oh man, that one's tough. I don't want. I don't want to bite into them and they're like poking the roof of your mouth and scratching. Oh man. Blah, just blah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and get back into this. Oh, man. Okay. So, I've also been doing a curious study of all the green bottles. And it seems to be when you pour it in a glass and you let the aroma waft away. I bit my fingernails, but I'll never have them on a sandwich. <laughs> That's funny, Ed. So, um, I meant I had to pick one, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you got to pick one. One of the things about the green bottle beer is if you let it, as long as your mustache isn't in there. Dude, look at this thing. <laughs> if you go ahead and you let it air out a little bit, the aroma that comes right out of that first part of the neck, 
most insane. What would you rather so far? Thank you. Yo, mom, put them on some bread and that mayo. <laughs> Laughing out. You guys are awesome. Baba, what are you having? Me too. <laughs> Baba, what are you going to go with? You going with the hairy hot dog? Baro, what you eating, bud? <laughs> anyway, let the green bottle air out a little bit. Let that little aroma that's trapped right here waft out and kind of blow away and you got yourself a nice good lager that we're going ahead and drinking and uh, much like the singha uh gonna go with the dog yes <laughs> so there's only been one or two people that are going with that fingernail sandwich um so anyway grill the sandwich there you go it's um it's a little crunchy on the outside it's so funny <laughs> today's just we're getting a little wacky on here but um now I want to go ahead and I want to talk about uh, the next sh uh, the thing that is coming out. And that is the next episode of Reading Man Dan. We still can't go and travel and I'm not going to go ahead and make videos. Can we throw some cheese on it? Sure, throw some cheese on it. Let it, let it get in there and make it better. I'm not going to go and, and do travel videos and be able to do them properly in the way that I want to do them. <laughs> Burnt hair. Oh, <laughs> You got to go there, huh, Aqua? <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. I'm enjoying watching. Thank you, Baro. Thank you very much. But um, So we're going ahead and we're going to shift gears and we're going to continue putting out on the regular Travel Man Dan days, the Reading Man Dan. And um, this next upcoming Reading Man Dan will be a really fun book. And it is also from one of the people that are going ahead and I'm working with here. And that is um, another Dr. Seuss book. And this is what we'll be reading. Marvin K. Mooney will you please go now okay and it's a really fun book it's a really fun story just go 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 i don't care how you can go by foot and you can go by cow marvin k mooney will you please go now there's a lot of cool little rhyming whips in there and stuff like that and um eventually reading man down will slide over to a different day and we'll go back to our regular scheduled travel man dan videos but a lot of fun getting a lot of interest from lots of cool and interesting people that are enjoying these reading man videos putting them on for their kids uh their little cousins their nieces their nephews so definitely like the traction and for me personally i love to create them i love to go ahead and make it fun make it interesting of course i'm not drunk at the time and um well it's just a really fun episode and that one that brings me to the next Thing that I want to talk about we're gonna go ahead and do it like in two weeks but um, so I posted last week's video and it was a video of me doing reading man Dan dr. Seuss a, a, a book um, I want to read this book don't worry Uncle John you just sit back maybe you can put your phone by your nightstand and I'll read you a story before you go to bed have you ever been in this house since you're so close um, no I haven't Duff but I hope that I get a chance to but uh, what I want to talk about is the reason I want to talk about more reading Man Dan is because I got the one of the coolest things ever. Um, so I make the smaller snippets for Instagram. They come out the following week. The video will come out uh, Wednesday, and then the following. If you like that, you have to add you're not drunk. <laughs> yeah, you're you're getting you. You know, I gotta let people know. You know, they're gonna put it on there for kids. But um, Dr. Seuss is a good writer. Baro, he's one of the best. Okay, so. One of the cool things is I make these cool, you know, smaller segments for Instagram and eventually they turn into Micro Mondays. Well, a guy had contacted me, liked what's, where's his house? I believe it's in Los Angeles. Um, it's in Pasadena, I believe. And he had contacted me and his, the guy's name was Donald Jacobson. And a really cool guy. And he's a children's book author. This is what he looks like. Pretty cool looking dude, right? He's got a beard. A, a nice cool draw, drawing um, Donald Jacobson contacted me after he saw one of my reading man dance and uh, we chopped it up over instant messenger and I told him that if he's interested to go ahead and send me one of his books and I'll go ahead and do a video on it well if I spell that right outside yes uh, La Jolla yeah that's right um, he, he asked me if I would be interested in reading and I said yeah sure and I you know we talked it for a little bit so this is really cool and this is really fun for me and guess what I'm so excited to to announce to put it out here first that he did go ahead and in fact send me a book and this I will be reading this is called Celestina the astronaut ballerina and check out this dude Donald Jacobson's artwork I mean just really cool stuff really interesting book 
fun, good stuff about a little girl who uh, before was a ballerina and then she had dreams and aspirations to become an astronaut. And then her teachers kind of motivate her and talk her into it. And I'm going to go ahead and read this book. But what I think is really cool is, well, the value and impact of reading Man Dan to have an author send me one of his books. Okay, this is a, a book that you can go ahead and purchase. So if you do like it, you won't be... Um, you won't be benefiting me in terms of money-wise. You'll be supporting Donald, and I'll be sure to go ahead and do a bunch of promos. But I wanted to bring that. Um, I know. It's huge, man. It's just like it's so cool to, um, to be able to go out there and use this platform. And, yes, I know it's small right now, but we're continuing. As you can see, we're growing each and every time. And now I'm having authors go ahead and send me their book, and I can go ahead and make content off. And how awesome is that? Let's go back to the chunk. Then I want to do this day in history, everybody's favorite. And then we're going to roll on to what are you reading, what are you watching. This is what we're drinking, the Green Bottle Chong Classic. Lots of fun nights in Thailand. Okay, all right. Much like some of the other lighter beers, it's bright, it's sharp, it's refreshing. And uh, I like to call it the Thai night beer, if you will. I don't know why, but I always drank the Singha or another one called Leo in the afternoon when I was at the beach. But then in the nighttime, I always turned it over to the green bottle and sucked down a couple of chongs. Really good stuff. Brings back some fun memories of Thailand. And it's got a really good taste. I love Dr. C Jack. Yes. I'm, I'm so pumped, Jack. Don't, buddy, we got so many books coming. I got, I'm looking at... I have so many books on deck that we're going to be reading. And another cool thing that we're going to do, and I'll go ahead and announce it at the videos, is if you're ever interested and you know like your niece, nephew, cousin, somebody in your family that watches Reading Bandan, okay, go ahead and hit me on DMs and I'll go ahead and send you that actual book. Let's start this day in history <laughs> without further ado. Baro is sitting back and he's ready for this day in history. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome, Barrow. So, yeah, let me know. All right, this day in history. Ladies and gentlemen, on this day in history, in 1848, it was the first ever U.S. Women's Convention held in Seneca Falls, organized by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Caddy Stanton and Lucachita Mott. All right, first hour. So that is the first one, um, is the first U.S. Women's Rights Convention, and it was in Seneca Falls, New York. And that was 1848. So pretty interesting. Really good. Um, a really good start to the U.S. Women's Rights Convention back in 1848. But then you could see they had some problems over the next hundred years. I mean, still to this day, right? But they've made huge strides. And ever since that day, and those two brave women and their courage to go ahead and start that um, that cause, that, that organization. That was the first of it, and uh, really proud to announce that. Wow, totally mispronounced that, but that was a good try. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> guys, and I didn't even do my friggin' disclaimer. Okay, look, I am not a history professor. I'm not a history teacher. I am not a history buff. I just go ahead and tell you what happened on this day in history many, many years ago or recently. And um, I was just called out by my cousin Brian. Brian, I love you. Brian is in a real history teacher. And he's probably freaking awesome, man. He gets wasted just like me. When do you read the children's books, Jack? Um, they are on Wednesdays every other week. But if you go to the channel, there's already like six or seven of them out there. Um, but my cousin Brian, he is a real history uh, teacher. So thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. I knew I was going to do that. Uh, we butcher a lot of names here, especially on this segment. But uh, thank you. We've got some more to come. All right. On this day in history, okay, in 1877, the first ever Wim Wimbledon men's tennis finals happened. <laughs> thank you, cuz. Um, it was a 27-year-old English rackets player named Spencer Gore. He wins the inaugural championship match and beats William Marshall. All right, so the first Wim uh, Wimbledon on 1877 was held on this day in history. So if you like tennis and you want to know, geez, when was the first ever Wimbledon? 
the actual Wimbledon started on the Friday of this week, but the championship match was on this day in history. All right, on this day in history, in 1941, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill launches his V for Victory campaign. V for Victory. Yes, what the heck is right? V for Victory. I don't know if you guys remember this, but and Aston, I'm not sure if you're with us, but if you don't know this, this is very offensive in England, okay? This is kind of like F you, right? So Winston Churchill turns it around and announces that the V stands for victory during the fight of World War II. On this day in history, um, 1941, he launches his V for victory campaign. Pretty awesome, pretty good stuff. Make sure you're like this. Um, <laughs> yes, see, Aston's, Aston's British. He's from London. So don't do this, okay? This was, um, I believe, some type of thing that goes back to medieval times where, like, it was between the English and French War, and as the British were not captured by the French, the British archers, okay, there was a symbol of, like, hey, see, you didn't cut my fingers off because when the French would capture the British, they would chop their two archery fingers off, and so this signified, hey, screw you, pal, I still got my fingers. So make sure you turn it around this way and V for victory, and that's what happened on this day. Roll moving right along in 1950, New York Yankees obtained their very first black players. Elston Howard and Frank Barnes were the first African American players to wear the pinstripes. You know we're huge Yankee fans over here. We always bring in a Yankee trivia or baseball trivia. So congrats to Elston Howard and Frank Barnes for breaking that barrier. Happy to know about V for victory. Yes, borrow. So don't do this, okay? Yeah, or don't do this. Do this. All right. I night in this day in history in 1969, Apollo 11 goes into moon orbit, and then. Well, it floats around for a day, and tomorrow would be the day that they go ahead and land. And one really cool, fun trip of Travel Man Dan fact was um, the astronauts that landed on the moon were Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. Well, Travel Man Dan had a chance to meet Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> it was... Um, Last year, I met him at uh, you know uh, at the observatory here in Los Angeles where I used to work, and he walked up to me and he said, "Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you, guy." <laughs> and he shook his hand, and uh, that was it. So uh, really cool stuff. But on this day in history, in 1969, Apollo 11 goes into moon orbit uh, the day before it lands on the moon, and then closing out this day in history in 2007. Okay, the TV drama Mad Men debuts, starring John Han, Elizabeth Moss, and Vincent Carthesiar. It was a cable network, AMC, and it kind of kind of blew AMC back into waters and, and, and made them a well a, a prominent figure in television shows. Um, really cool show about like uh, 1960s like journalism marketing, but it really broke John Hamm's career. And uh, another fun Travel Man Dan movie exper experience was um, <clears throat> this. Uh, it would have been already out, but uh, John Hamm is in the new upcoming Top Gun 2 movie. Um, it got delayed because of COVID-19, but. Uh, there's been a certain uh, travel show host that was his uh, body double, <laughs> stand-in. <laughs> That's right. Travel Man Dan was John Han's double on the movie Top Gun 2 uh, recently, about six months ago. So what that means is you have your stand-in and you have your body double. The stand-in basically stands on the thing and, and, and the mark and waits till the camera sets up and everything. And then he leaves and John Han will come in and then they, they film the scene. But I was the body double, so I was actually John Hamm in the scenes because John Hamm wasn't able to be there. So they shoot it either behind your shoulder or maybe you're in the background. But it was a really cool, fun shoot. I was there for uh, one day. I got a chance to meet Tom Cruise and Miles Teller. Um, Top Gun 2 will be coming out. Uh, I'm not sure when. You probably won't even see me or recognize me. That's the whole purpose of it is that you kind of have the same structure as John Hamm. I was a little more muscular at the time than him. But, um, yeah, it was pretty cool to be on that set and see Tom Cruise work, uh, hang out with Miles Teller a little bit. And, um, yeah, it was a really fun, kind of cool shoot. And, uh, you know, 
working my way through Hollywood, baby. Uh, that was 2007, Mad Men debuted, and uh, I've never seen it. It's a really cool show. I think it did about four or five seasons, and uh, fun stuff. All right, going back into it. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and swig this sucker down. Really nice summertime beer. You're a classic, delicious Thai beer. Just like I said, when we look at the Chong Classic, we look at it and we think, wow, that's pretty cool Thai lager beer. But the taste is so delicious. It's um, it's well balanced and much like the other lager, it's kind of a, of a dry taste to it. But if you haven't tried it, check it out. Like I said, if you have a hard time trying to locate it, uh, don't buy it off the internet. Go to the Asian supermarket in your area, and I'm sure you could probably find one, if not both, of these beers. Moving right along, does that thing above your lip uh, <laughs> get taste? Well, cause this thing right here, this uh, definitely uh, stores a little bit of flavor to it, but uh, give or take, I don't know. I don't know how you want to think about it. But uh, now we're gonna roll right into the segment called "What Are You Reading? What Are You Watching?" I'm gonna make this quick. Uh, you know about Travel Man Dan and his summer reading project. <laughs> I like Chang. Yeah, it's good. Um, working my way through it. It's a barn burner, kind of going slow, but I will have it finished by the end of August. Flavor saver. And that is Don Quixote. There it is, baby. 900 good ass pages of Cervantes. Really tough book, um, but fun. It is the Spanish Shakespeare. Um, reading my way through it. That's what I'm reading. I'm also reading... One of my favorite books because, like I said, I don't stay glued to one book. I jump around much like TV. I watch a lot of different channels. I like to be stimulated by plays. I like to be stimulated by classics. I like to be stimulated by, well, this book, The Travel Book by Lonely Planet. One of the sickest books. It has every single country in it. Gives a little fun fact. Makes these cool-ass little pictures. And look at this. Hey, to my friend Barrow. I just happened to anonymously open up to India. Check this place out. Wow. Look at that festival. They're all grooving and popping. That's probably where the color ran, run came from. I believe that is the... Let's see what festival is that. Um, that is... During the Holly Festival of Color. How great would that be to go to that thing? Everyone just dumping all kinds of color into it. But this is what I'm also reading. The Travel Book. And what am I watching? I'm watching. It's on Netflix right now. And it's called Cold Case Files. Um, I love all these kind of... Uh, real kind of drama stuff you know uh the, the real cases which is kind of sad and a little bit depressing festival of colors holly yes borrow <laughs> so cool wow everything is so good thank you uncle john i appreciate it um well you know it's kind of it's kind of bittersweet because you like watching these cold case files and unsolved mysteries and these kinds of things because you want to see these people get caught and but on the other side of that, this is this is real life to some people, some family, some some friends, and you know, it's tragic. And these people are demons, and um, well, that's what I'm watching. If you haven't seen it, hi, Sergarito two five zero four five. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for hopping on. I'm talking about what are you watching? That's what I'm watching. But what's really kind of cool is. The show that I watched today, the episode on Cold Case Files, was a show that I portrayed one of the police officers on the investigating case in another different show. So the Cold Case Files watches it. I think Jack is using Uncle John's. So, okay. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> I'm like, who is talking like this? Jack, you're the mirror. I love you, Jack. And um, so I'm watching this, and the, and the police officer's name is um, a name that I'm familiar with. I'm going... Jeez, Chad Garcia, that sounds familiar. And I'm watching the story unfold. It's like episode three or four. So if you ever watch Cold Case Files, episode three or four, the one about the, uh, the, 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 man, the young man and his girlfriend who were murdered, actually, I played the police officer in a reenactment TV show many, uh, I think it was two years ago, I played that police officer and I'm sitting here watching them today. So it was really crazy to kind of connect all those dots. It's about a guy named Ed Edwards, real psychopath, kind of crazy dude in the 80s. Um, and, uh, you know, I learned about him from my show, but it was nice to see 
this police officer that I actually played, uh, Chad Garcia. So yeah, that's what I'm reading. That's what I'm watching. Feel free to pop down and let me know what you're doing, uh, what you're reading, what you're watching. He should let Jack do the typing. <laughs> but now I'm going to go ahead and swig this down. We're going to close out the show with uh, the quote of the week that I want you to go ahead and think about, muster about, um, you know, uh, just kind of reflect back on. And then that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and slam this last bit of Chang. Oh, that's good. I want another one. It's really good. It's really, really tasty stuff. Delicious, refreshing. Okay, it's um, it's got still that weird faint aroma that tastes like a skunk, but it's not as malty as the Singha. It's crisp. It's refreshing as well. It's got a nice taste to it. Um, well, overall, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rate it just below. Just below the sing high a little bit. Um, and that's why we're going to give the Chang a 7.5. Okay, 7.5. Still a very respectable score. But we brought the sing high in a little bit higher at 8. And the Chang beer at 7.5. Two delicious beers from the wonderful country of Thailand. I hope that you can get a chance to go see it for yourself. Drink one of these guys on the beach, in the street, or on a tuk-tuk. You will absolutely love it. If you can't get over there, please go ahead and go and try to find it wherever locally and just give it a try. The Chang is a little stronger at 5%, but still really nice, delicious lagers. All right, I'm going to wrap this sucker up. And I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me. I've gotten like 17 to 20 people here. From those of you that started watching me when I had like two people, good episode, Danny. Talk to you soon. Duff. Thank you so much for joining. Love you, bro. And, um, you know, this is, my, this is my journey. This is my start. Um, we're not even at the middle yet. We're just warming up. Um, so thank you so much for spending this time with me, wherever you're at, uh, tuning in, giving me your attention. Really just thank you so much, Tenacious Freak. And I'm going to end you with this quote. And this quote was uh, given to us today. Don't get drunk. Obi, yes, we have Obi from Laos. Welcome, uh, Sawadika and uh, Austin. Two elephants there on the bottle. Yes, one last time. Obi is from Laos. Okay, check it out, Obi. We are drinking Chang and Singha. Okay, delicious beers from Thailand. But I want to read you this quote from Robert Tu, the great author. And he said, he said this, The struggle you're in today is developing the strength you need tomorrow. Bye, Uncle John. Bye, Jack. Everyone, family, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandpas, grandmas, love you guys. Thank you for hopping on. All right. The struggle you're in today is developing the strength you need tomorrow. Now, however this is related to you, I want you to go ahead and think back and reflect what's going on. Um, hopefully that you're not in any dire need of health care or whatever, but uh, financial Okay, obviously the COVID-19, something economically might be going on in your life. Something personal might be going on in your life. And you don't have to share it. I don't want to know. I just want you to think about it. Like what struggle you're going through today is helping you develop that strength that you need to get through this. And as you go through it, because you will get through it, no matter what it is. Okay, you just want to make sure that you don't fall off the rails and go batshit crazy while you're going through it. Thank you, Bubba. Always a pleasure. Be safe. Good to have you here. Hang in there. There's a purpose for this, okay? There's a purpose for this. Whatever it is, however it relates to you, if you can go ahead and pull back on it and imagine the good times that are coming, you're going to have them. They're coming up, guys, no matter where it is. You know, the strength that you build during this time you're going to go ahead and use that later. And I love how Robert, too, pronounces that and, and talks about, well, you're going to need it tomorrow, all right? Because here's another thing. Bye, Uncle John. Good to see you. Here's another thing. The strength that you're developing now, you're going to need, again, because we're, we might go back into some other crazy stuff. We might have to draw back on being stronger. And there's going to be things that pop up that are not peaches and cream and not all great in your life and you're going to need to draw on them strength so going back to this quote stay strong i wish you the best in health 
I hope that everything is okay in your life and that you continue to build on it. If you start small and equal, equal parts, just try to get a little bit better each day. Just kind of get a little bit better and build that strength that you need from whatever you're going through. You're going to have to use it later, all right? Or, well, you're developing yourself into a, a well-balanced... I, I, get, I get a little... Thanks, Barl. <laughs> I get a little emotional even just thinking about it. Catch you next week. Good advice. Stay strong. Stay healthy. Love you. And that's what I'm going to lead at because I get so emotional. I'm sweating here. I'm getting pumped up. And um, I'm very passionate about these kinds of things. So I'm going to leave it to you like that. Like my brother said. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me. Stay healthy. Be strong. Thank you for joining me one last time. I'm Travel Man Dan. And remember. It's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Dad. See you guys. Bye, Aquanuts. Uncle John. Tenacious Freak. Should we do a little dance at the end each time? <laughs> it's LOL. Bye. W2 Borrow. Thank you. Wait. All right. Bye, guys.